I'm going to talk about overdispersion and how to analyze overdispersed data in SAS. So, just the outline of the talk today. First, I'll talk about the definition of overdispersion, and I'll give a little bit of background and talk about the causes of overdispersion. Then, I'll talk about the consequences of ignoring overdispersion in your data when you run your analysis. And then, I'll talk about how to account for overdispersion um, for data analysis in SAS. And so, I'll I'm breaking the talk up generally between count data and then between binary or binomial data. So over dispersion can also be called extra variation. It arises when count or binary data exhibit variances larger than what is assumed under the Poisson or binomial distributions. And so count data can be defined as non-negative non -negative integer values that arise from counting rather than ranking. So for example, the number of days a student is absent in one school year. And count data is commonly analyzed using the Poisson distribution. So for example, using Poisson regression. The Poisson distribution or a Poisson random variable can be defined as the number of occurrences of a random event in a defined interval of space or time. And Poisson regression is nice. It'll give us an estimate of, um, it'll give us an estimate that we can transform into the relative risk. So it's a natural model for count data. However, the disadvantage is that there's a very strong assumption with the Poisson distribution, namely that the variance is equal to the mean. So any times the variance is larger than the mean, then you have overdispersion. So for binary or binomial data, so binary data can be defined as zeros or ones. For example, if you were ever tested for HIV, it would be one. If you've never been tested, that's a zero. Um, sometimes binary or binomial data is grouped so that you're analyzing uh, the proportion directly. So proportion of tested for HIV. Um, and then I just have some tables to show that the data, if you have data in binary form, so for example here, Tested HIV is a, bi a binary variable. It's all ones and zeros. Um, and there are multiple observations per city. So like city would be the group. If you group your data by city, moving on to the second table, you will get the proportion tested for HIV um, by city. So then it's number of tested counting up one, two out of four, and then one out of three, and then that is, um, can also be analyzed using the binomial distribution. Um, so commonly for either binary or group binary data, you'll use logistic regression. So a binomial random variable can be defined as the number of successes in a sequence of random processes that results in one of two mutually exclusive outcomes. And over dispersion, again, it's just when your observed variance is larger than what is assumed under the binomial distribution. Overdispersion can be caused um, by lots of factors. One of the most common factors is just that observed data rarely follow statistical distributions. Um, for count variables, the variance often increases with the size of the counts. Um, if we have lack of independence in our data, so for example, we have correlated data or clustered data, that can cause overdispersion. Also, heterogeneity among observations in your sample. And another example could be if your data has a large number of zeros. So what happens if you ignore overdispersion in your data analysis? Say you run a regression, you ignore the overdispersion, your standard errors will be underestimated, which means your p-values will also be underestimated. So you're going to be potentially seeing signif associations that aren't really there. They're going to look significant. So your type 1 error will be inflated, larger than the nominal value of 0.05. So you're going to be having higher false positive rates. And that will lead you to erroneous inferences. So we want to try to avoid that in our data analyses. So two quick ways to check for overdispersion, if you have count data, would be proc means. And you can just look at the variance in the mean. Or you can run proc gedmod and do a negative binomial regression. We'll talk more about this later. But just as an example, to start things off and show what happens when you ignore overdispersion in your analyses um, compared to accounting for it, say you have a randomized controlled trial and you had participants randomized to either intervention or control. 
So that would be the variable INTV. So one is intervention condition, zero is control condition. And you want to see if your subjects are comparable on baseline depression. And so we're measuring depression through EPDS, which is a depression scale. It's a weighted count of depressive symptoms felt in the past week. So this is what EPDS looks like. This is very common histogram to see for count data. You wouldn't want to analyze this as is using a linear regression model, because um, it's not very normal looking. So you might think, OK, well, I'll analyze this using um, uh, count regression. So if you further look at your data and you look at the mean and the variance, you can see that using PROC means, the variance is already four times larger than the mean. So you already know that if you want to use a Poisson distribution, there's going to be over dispersion in your data. If you look at the conditional mean and variance, so stratified on intervention group, you can see that the, first of all, the means are very similar. And again, the variance at each level of intervention is four times larger than the mean. So when you want to test the, uh, if there's any difference in baseline depression between intervention conditions, um, you can, two choices you might make is to use Poisson regression and ignore the over dispersion, or you can use account for over dispersion. One of the ways you could do that is using negative binomial regression, and we'll talk more about that later. So just to show what happens between these two different analyses, you know, um, ignoring over dispersion or accounting for it, um, this is analysis is in PROC gen mod for specifying distribution equals Poisson versus distribution equals negative binomial. And another way to check for over dispersion, just to compare this to the PROC means output, is for the negative binomial regression. You can look at the dispersion parameter that the SAS output gives you down here. And if the dispersion parameter is significantly different from zero, that's an indication that there is significant over or under dispersion. So here the dispersion parameter is larger than zero, and it is significant. And so that matches what we saw in the PROC mean statement, and that there is significant over dispersion in these data. So the results for the Poisson regression and the negative binomial regression, um, the p-values are quite different. If you used, um, and you can also see that the standard errors are quite different while the estimates are very similar. And so if you just looked at this Poisson regression and ignored the over dispersion and you didn't check for over dispersion, you might conclude that the, there is a difference in baseline depression between these two groups. And that would be an incorrect conclusion and you might think, oh no, why didn't, ran why didn't randomization work for this variable, you might decide you need to account for baseline depression in any sort of outcome analysis that you do at follow-up. Whereas if you had accounted for over dispersion, you would correctly conclude that there's no association between these two variables and that randomization was successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, sometimes it can happen that you can have, it would be like, a, you know, if you had a t test, a t sample t test, and you did a test for whether the variances were equal, maybe it wouldn't reject, but the difference between an equal and unequal variance assumption would have an impact on the inference about whether the means are different. I wonder if something like that is going on here. Well, looking at not equal to zero. Yeah, so if you go back, and I'll actually explain in detail later how the dispersion parameter is parameterized mm -hmm. in SAS. Um, but so here you're actually looking at not equal to zero. And I'll show why that is the case um, when, I look, when I talk about negative binomial regression. So, the, so is the, or, or is what I'm thinking of is uh, the dispersion parameter this is sort of like the log of the, I mean, it, it, so. Let's go on the next one. What? Like, 
there the scale parameters being set equal to one is the scale parameters not the dispersion? Parameters? It's different, yeah. So yeah, and we'll talk about what the scale means later, and we'll talk about how the dis dispersion parameter is defined later. So okay. sorry, <laughs> it's a lot of information now. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, OK, so yes, yeah, so we'll talk about the dispersion parameter with the negative binomial regression. We'll talk about the scale parameter and the quasi-likelihood um, estimation. So <coughs> we've seen that you can account for overdispersion using negative binomial regression. Um, there are other methods. A couple I just generally clumped together and called them variance adjustment models. So quasi-likelihood estimation, <coughs> empirical variance estimation, and then models for correlated data and then also zero inflated models. So negative binomial regression. Um, we like the negative binomial distribution because by definition, the variance is larger than the mean. So it's an excellent model for count data, especially if your data are over dispersed. Negative binomial regression will also give you um, a coefficient, which you can exponentiate and get an estimate of the relative risk. The only disadvantage is that because you're estimating um, an extra parameter, you're estimating the dispersion parameter. Sometimes, depending on what kind of analysis you're trying to do, SAS won't like that. It may not converge as frequently as it might for Poisson regression, but otherwise it's a really great model to use. And you can implement negative binomial regression in GenMod and CountReg, among um, other procs. So this is the code, um, and we've already sort of seen this in GenMod. You just specify the distribution is negative binomial in the model statement. And for CountReg, it, the syntax is exactly the same. And this is just showing what the output looks like. Um, the output is almost exactly the same between the two. And again, just showing that the, cons the standard errors are larger compared to the naive Poisson regression, and the p-values are much more conservative. So then talking about the dispersion parameter, um, one way you can parameterize the relationship between the variance and the mean for the negative binomial distribution is that variance is equal to mean plus k times mean squared, where k is the dispersion parameter. And SAS will give you an estimate of this dispersion parameter. GenMod calls it dispersion. CountReg calls it alpha. And so again, you can see from, so if the dispersion parameter is significantly different from zero, that means there is significant um, over or under dispersion. So, and you can see if k is equal to zero, then this equation reduces to variance equals the mean. And if that is the case, then you may as well just use Poisson regression. So it's a handy piece of information that SAS will give you. Moving on to quasi-likelihood estimation. Um, QLE estimation allows for adjusting the variance without specifying the distribution exactly, which is nice because no data follows any sort of distribution exactly. The variances are inflated by one of two statistics, either deviance di divided by its degrees of freedom or Pearson's chi-square divided by the degrees of freedom. So GenMod will do both. So for deviance, you would specify D scale. For Pearson's chi-square, it's P scale. And then you can also implement the equivalent of P, P scale in Glimix. So, and the nice thing about QLE is you can add this to your model statement, whether you're making Poisson or negative binomial regression or logistic regression. So this is what your code will look like. So this is the standard naive Poisson, and this is Poisson um, with adding D scale to the model statement after you specify the distribution. And so the top table is unadjusted variances. The bottom ta table is adjusted var variances after using the D scale statement. So you'll see that now the scale state, the scale parameter has a value. And the way we get that value is the deviance divided by its degrees of freedom, and then you take the square root of that. And so this, this 2.7 factor is what these standard errors are multiplied by to get the adjusted standard errors um, in the quasi-likelihood estimation. So you can see here, if you use D-scale, it'll give you the this, this scale estimate, and then your standard errors will be a little bit larger, and then your p-values will be 
um, more accurate and um, more conservative. And then this is just to compare Poisson regression, not using D scale or using D scale, and then negative binomial regression. And you can see that, like we saw before, Poisson regression, um, naive Poisson regression is really sensitive to overdispersion. You see the p-value between the two increases by a factor of 1,000. As compared to a negative binomial regression, even if you're not using QLE, your standard errors are pretty much the same as what they are once you do use QLE. Um, standard errors are only inflated by a factor of about one. And your p-values are pretty much the same between the two regressions also. So it's just an example that negative binomial regression is really great um, in taking care of overdispersion. So this is, in case you wanted to do p-scale, this is the code here for GenMod and for Glimix. For Glimix, you specify random residual. And um, the output is pretty much the same between the two. I was told to use d-scale rather than p-scale because d-scale is better for low counts. Um, so you could just use d-scale rather than p-scale. And also just use it for whatever regression you have as the norm because it's going to account for any um, residual over dispersion. So empirical variance estimation is another way to adjust your um, variance. Empirical variance estimation um, uses both empirical-based estimates as well as model-based estimates. And you can implement this in Poisson or negative binomial regression through GenMod's repeated statement or Glimix's empirical option. So for GenMod, this is what the syntax looks like in SAS. So the note here is that this might look like a hierarchical model, but in fact, there is one observation per PID. And if you use the repeated statement in Glimix and specify subject equals PID or however else you're identifying your observations, that will call the empirical variance estimator. And you can see that the standard error is much larger than in the naive Poisson, and the p-value is also more conservative. And then you can also call empirical variance mm -hmm. estimation in Glimix. The nice thing about Glimix is that in empirical variance estimation, there is a tendency to inflate the type 1 errors for small sample sizes, and GenMod does not correct for that, but Glimix will. If you specify empirical equals MBN, that will correct for any um, small sample bias. And then the rest of the code, random residual, subject equals PID. Again, there's one observation per PID, um, but this is just um, sort of a neat trick to ask for the empirical variance. So moving on to cluster data, uh, data can be clustered um, through repeated measurements within subjects or clustering of multiple subjects within groups. Um, in SAS, you can do um, cluster data analyses in for Poisson negative binomial or logistic regression. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over the different methods because there are a lot of them. It could be a seminar or a class in, in and of itself. Um, two main models are generalized linear mixed models or generalized estimating equations. GLMM you use with Glimix, so the random intercept statement or Glimix's random residual statement. Um, GEE you can implement through ProcGenMod, um, very similar to what we saw before because um, GEEs actually use the empirical variance, so GenMod's repeated statement or Glimix empirical equals MBN. So for GLMM, um, the two different models, so we have one way you can do it with a marginal model on Proc Glimix is random residual. You specify subject equals and then whatever, your, whatever the cluster level is. So for in this example, there are multiple subjects per city. And then you specify a covariant structure for the clusters. And then if you want to do a conditional model, you can do a random intercept statement and then again specify subject equals city for your cluster. For GEE, 
Again, with Proclimix, this is very similar to what we saw before, except for now there are multiple subjects um, per city, and we're specifying subject equals city. So you call um, empirical variance in Proclimix using the empirical equals option. MBN is the small sample bias correction. In Junmod, you don't have the option to correct for the small sample bias, but you can ask for GEE through the repeated statement, specify subject equals city, whatever your cluster level is and then specify a covariance structure. In this case, it's compound symmetry. So for zero inflated models, if your data have an overabundance of zeros, um, this could be, that would be a case where zero inflated models are appropriate. Um, an excess of zeros might be an indication of sample heterogeneity. Um, the theory behind ZI models is that you're assuming your sample comes from two different latent populations. So one would be the non-susceptible subjects and the other would be the susceptible subjects. So the non-susceptible subjects, we're assuming they're always going to be zero no matter what. Sometimes they're called the structural zero group or the certain zero group. And the susceptible <coughs> subjects may or may not be zero. So ZI regression is a mixture model. You're actually doing two regression models, and each one can have its own explanatory variables. First, you're going to do a logit appropriate regression to model the probability of being in the non-susceptible group, and then conditional on being in this non-susceptible group, or conditional on being in the susceptible group, you're going to model the mean for that population. And you can do ZI in proc gen mod, proc count reg. Um, zero inflated Poisson, you specify distribution equals ZIP. For zero inflated negative binomial, distribution equals ZINB. Um, and also it's important to keep in mind, even if after you account for the excess zeros, your data might still be distributed negative binomial um, rather than Poisson. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, <laughs> so then just a note about GenMod, zero inflated negative binomial, it's only available after SAS version 9.2, so that's, if you try to run the following code and it doesn't work, that's probably why. Um, so just as, as an example, I got this from UCLA's ATS website. Say you're interested in modeling the number of fish caught by groups of campers at a national park, and you want to explain the number of fish caught via three variables, the number of children in the group, whether or not the group brought a camper, and the number of people in the group. So this is what count looks like. And 57% 50 of the values are zero values. You can see there are a huge number of zero values. So it's an indication that a zero inflated model would be appropriate. This is what the code looks like. Um, GenMod and count reg. You can see in the model statement, you specify distribution equals zip um, for a zero inflated Poisson model. So here you're asking to model the count of the number of fish for the susceptible population, the non-zero population. Um, yeah? Is there any other way that, uh, any, any other indications that a zero inflated model might be there besides 57 percent? Yeah, so there are formal tests that you can do in SAS and STATA. I am not going over them in this presentation, but I can email you okay. some links if you, yeah. There's, there's one test called the Vuong test. I don't know if you've heard of it. But it'll, it's, what I've seen for SAS, it's a macro. It's V-U-O-N-G. Um, it's a macro in SAS. And if you use Stata, there's actually just a, a command that you can use that'll give you the test. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you just ask me afterwards, I can give you the links. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so here, um, modeling count with child and camper, and then you're saying model the probability of being non-susceptible using person, so modeling the probability of being non-susceptible. And for account reg, um, same thing, you're modeling um, the, in the zero model statement, um, probability of being non-susceptible by um, number of persons. So this is what the output looks like. So GenMod breaks it down really nicely in between. This is your count regression. This is your logit regression. Um, and then pretty much the same output in count reg. Um, and then the zero inflated um, estimates are um, at the bottom with the INF 
in front of them. And the output is pretty much the same between the two. So moving on to binary data. Um, binary data accounting for overdispersion isn't as user friendly, unfortunately. Um, so for the first two topics, I'm going to brush over them very quickly um, because you basically have to implement them using PROC NL mix, so it's a lot of code. Um, but the random clump binomial and the beta binomial models are really excellent um, to model over dispersion in, in the binomial, uh, for binomial data. Um, zero inflated binomial as well. And then again, we'll just touch on the quasi likelihood estimation, empirical variance, and um, correlated data. So the beta binomial and the random clunk binomial uh, will actually model the physical mechanism behind over dispersion. You do these regressions using PROC NL mixed. Um, however, if you have SAS 9.3, I guess there's an experimental PROC called PROC FMM for finite mixture model. So if you're lucky enough to have that, then it makes it a lot easier for you. Um, in case you're wondering you know, what might my data look like that would indicate to me that I need to use beta binomial or random clump binomial. Um, this is data generated under the beta binomial distribution on the right and on the, or on the left. On the right, you have um, a random clump binomial distribution. And so an example, um, and I'm going to go through the example and then show you how to generate the data and then give the code so in case you want to try it out on your own, that's available. So in one example, there were samples of 337 nuclei, and each nucleus has three chromosome pairs. And we want to model the number of chromosome pairs with association at meiosis. So if the probability of association, so t divided by m, is constant for all nuclei and the same across all chromosome pairs, then the binomial distribution would be appropriate. However, if that's not the case, then you can use the random clump binomial or the beta binomial. So this is how the, co the data are generated, in case you want to try out the code on your own. Um, this is what the code looks like in PROC NL Mixed. So it's pretty user intensive. You have to tell SAS everything you want it to do. Um, so I'm not going to go through it, but it's here in case you want to try it on your own. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. And then code for analyzing the same data using the zero inflated binomial. Um, so with the zero inflated binomial, similar to um, another zero inflated model, you're going to model the probability of being always zero and the probability um, of, oh, and then conditional on not always being zero, you're going to model the probability of the event of interest. So moving on to more user-friendly code and procs. Um, for the quasi-likelihood estimation, um, I'll just give an example of how your data might be organized and then how you're going to use Q QLE in both examples. So if we wanted to analyze cases of toxoplasmosis, and the data are grouped um, by city in El Salvador, um, toxoplasmosis is a parasitic infection. Um, so on the left, you have um, the variable tox, and it's binary data. You can see there's multiple observations per um, city. So city would be the cluster. Um, but then you can group the data um, by city and then look at the proportion number of cases divided by total number sampled. And then we want to explain cases of toxoplasmosis via annual rainfall for each city. So. If there is one observation per city and its number of cases divided by total number of cases, QLE is implemented the ex exactly the same as it is um, for count data. So I mean, namely that you just put dscale in the model statement. However, if your data are binary and they, in this case they're grouped by city, so to implement QLE estimation, you say in the model statement you put dscale similarly to before but then you have to specify how the data are aggregated so in this case they're aggregated at the city, lo city level and then doesn't matter which way um, your data are formed if you use those that those different um, statements you'll get the exact same results um, so 
SAS will give you an estimate of the scale parameter, and that is used to inflate the um, standard errors. So moving on to empirical variance estimation, and in this case, we need one observation per subject, so we're going to be using the data that has number of cases divided by total cases, so there's one observation per city. And it's the same as it was before, just using um, a binomial um, link function in the model statement and then having, using the repeated statement like we saw before. In this case, there's one observation per city, so you say subject equals city. And then since we already know, using this data set, that the subjects are clustered by city, there are multiple subjects per city, um, we already know that this data is clustered. So moving on to clustered data, to analyze this data set, um, we can use GE or GLMM. So again, in ProcGenMod, it's the same repeated statement as before. You're specifying there are multiple subjects per city, and then you specify your covariance structure. And then we like Glimix better than GenMod, actually, because um, using the empirical equals MBN option, you can account for um, the small sample bias inherent in GEE. And then you use the random residual, specify subject equals city for your cluster level, and then define a covariance structure. So for GLMM in Glimix, you can use a random intercept model, or you can use um, a marginal model, so random residual, and then specify a covariance structure. So this is output from all of these different models using this toxoplasmosis data. Looking specifically, as you can see, we're asking for rain, rain squared, rain cubed. So looking just at the rain cubed variable, um, I just wanted to point out that if you look at the unadjusted model, the p-value is quite small, the standard error is pretty small, similar to what you expect if there's over dispersion, your p-value is going to be underestimated. And the, the mo all of the models that account for over dispersion, their standard errors are larger, their p-values are much more conservative, the p-values are all around 0.02. Um, however, I just wanted to point out for um, GEE, if you don't correct for small sample bias, your p-value, the 0 0.009, is almost as small as an unadjusted logistic regression. So that's important to keep in mind. We're trying to avoid underestimating the type 1 error. And if you just use GEE without looking into any potential small sample bias, it could go against all of your plans. So, <laughs> um, so just in sum, over dispersion is really common. If you're using Poisson or binomial, it's probably going to be an issue and you just need to know how to account for it. You want to make sure you account for over dispersion because otherwise your false error rates are going to be higher than the nominal levels. And for Poisson, use negative binomial. Um, for binomial, use random clump binomial or beta binomial. Um, you can use quasi likelihood estimation or empirical variance estimation and then um, Again, accounting for clustering and being aware of um, zero inflated models. So in case you want to learn more, there are a lot of things that I didn't cover. So you, there, we covered the binomial and the Poisson distribution, but we didn't talk about the multinomial distribution. Um, so that could be something to look into. Um, I got a lot of my information from this presentation um, from a class I took at JSM that was pre presented by Morel and Nierchal. And I'll give some references that, uh, of a book that they wrote. So if you want to learn more, um, you can look into that. For the Poisson distribution, um, we didn't talk about hurdle models. So that's always something to look into. And then again, the formal tests for over dispersion, as well as comparing models. And then there's also something called generalized linear over dispersion mixed models, where your data are hierarchical, but then you also want to model the over dispersion. So that's always another topic to look into also. So thank you all for coming, and I just want to thank CCH for giving me this opportunity, and I want to thank the Methods Corps for mm -hmm. sending me to JSM, and um, UCLA Biostat also. Yay, I use my notes all the time. <laughs> and then again, I just wanted to cite the presentation that was the basis for this talk. So references and resources, and there's an ex like a, 
full page of this in case you want to look into it more. I use ATS all the time. It's really great. And thank you very much. <laughs>